Hi folks, my name is Chuck, Chuck Newt, and I'm with Winging Pig Barbecue, and you're watching a new episode of Chuck's Cooking. And tonight, we are going to make meatloaf, jambalaya, pork rib tip, collard greens, ham and beans, full slab spare ribs, and much more. So come on and follow along. Alright folks, well today we are going to smoke some uh, chicken. Actually, I've got some thighs and uh, chicken legs that I'm going to work on here. This is the last day, uh, last uh, weekend, I should say, of uh, September in 2018. And so we're moving on towards fall. And if you notice this tree back over here, over my shoulders, uh, you can see that the leaves are starting to turn and whatnot. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it over here. We're going to spice up some chicken and uh, get ready to put it on the smoker. A little, I'm going to use a little, uh, my old Brinkman smoker today. It is a uh, offset smoker, but it is not a reverse flow smoker. So you will see as we go along, I'll be moving the chicken from one end of the grill to the other to make sure that all of it is getting, uh, you know, some decent, decent time down near the heat. All right, so let's get turned around and get to it here. All right, folks, so I got my, I guess, half dozen thighs here and uh, probably about 10 legs there. And the first thing I'm going to do is kind of go through and dress these up a little bit. Kind of pull the skin back, sort the covering. And you see I got one like that. And uh, I'm going to cut that off of there. Good sharp knife. And I got a cat over here on my right hand side. And I'm going to throw that skin over there to him. And let him deal with it. My neighbor's cat. I like the skin off chicken as well as anybody, but that's that's not meat. Too terrible. That's four. And the last one. You see you got that big old hunk of skin there that makes you wonder if uh, they're trying to throw you weight by throwing all that skin to you there like that. Actually when I went to the restaurant supply store a little bit ago I, my intent was to buy a couple whole chickens, but they were out of whole chickens, so I didn't buy any. Okay, that's got them pretty well dressed up. Now, if I was going to do a competition, I'd do a whole lot different than what I'm doing here. But, good enough for today. And on these legs, the skin has kind of shrunk back on some of them. I don't think I'll need to do any trimming here. But I do like the skin to cover the meat. That's got that. I'm going to take one glove off now. And I'm going to break out this uh, GT South dry rub. I'll uh, leave a link down to their site down there in the bottom in the show notes. 
So we're gonna give it a pretty good liberal spice up here. Sorry about that. I think I got a mosquito that was biting me on the leg there and uh, it was unappreciated. Like we've got a good kit with the rub. Now I'm going to use some cayenne pepper here because I like a little spice to my chicken. That uh, GT South rub has a bit of a sweetness to it. Which is fine for chicken. I don't use um, a sweet flavored rub on my pork butts or um, brisket or anything like that. In fact, brisket is primarily salt and pepper, garlic, and garlic powder and onion powder. That's basically what I use on my brisket. One of these days I'll do a video of that. Do not wash your chicken. prior to cooking. The FDA says not to. In fact, uh, if you go to one of these uh, places to get your food handling certification. I done got done washing the meat. That is also one of the things that they teach you. You actually spread more germs. By washing it. And I got the accent. Lord, let me pray. I got this, I got this. Then you do not washing it. I watch the chicken, so I don't want to hear nothing about nobody saying I didn't watch the darn meat. So do not wash your chicken. Anybody want to help? Anybody want to help? Anybody want? Who told you to wash the meat with dish detergent? Somebody said wash the meat. My friend girl um, Bubba just told me to wash the meat. She said wash the meat. When I don't, not with soap. Not with soap. Oh, I'm eating this. So do not wash your chicken. Okay, so we've got our chicken rubbed up and ready to go. I'm going to cover this up and uh, go over here to the smoker and get a good fire started. And we'll be back shortly. Alright folks, I got the charcoal going here. I got a hunk of hickory back in there. I'm just going to let this kind of roll right up against like that. I guess the way the wind's going, I'm going to kind of eat the smoke today. Some days, uh, comes and wipes it right through here out of my face but today not so much okay so I'll let that go for just a minute I don't like to uh, let it get too rip roaring inside the chimney starter there because I find that it's too hot to handle I can't tell you that this uh, old Brinkman of mine is uh, the best smoker in the world, but it is my pride and joy. 
I've had it about 18 years probably now, at least. So we're going to go ahead and, as soon as I get my glove, now I want to run this at a fairly low temperature for a couple hours, let them get some smoke going here. And I'm going to try to keep my meat down towards this end of the smoker because uh, if I put it too close down here, as I told you before, it's not a reverse flow. So if I put it too far down here, then they get a lot of, a lot of heat. And they'll cook or brown or burn or <laughs> too quickly. There we go. Now, like I said, I'm going to try to do this at a fairly low temperature. For a couple hours. Close this up. Now, I'll be keeping an eye on this uh, thermometer here. It is actually surprisingly accurate. And uh, I have tested it out, you know, with a digital thermometer. And it is uh, very close to true temperature. Okay, so my temperature has reached about the upper limit of where I want to see it right now, which is about 275. I want to try to keep it between 275 and 225. Um, so I have throttled back the air just a little bit on this thing. There you go. Maybe if you can see the stack up here. Throttled the exhaust a little bit. I also throttled the intake a little bit. Alright, so we'll be keeping an eye on this now. Okay folks, well it's been on about an hour now. And uh, I think this chicken's starting to look pretty darn good myself. Okay, so I'm going to back out of there, and uh, we're going to come back at it about another hour and let you see what we're going. I can smell that cayenne in there. Okay, so these have been on about two hours now, maybe a little over. And I'm going to start cranking up the heat and get these things finished off. We're running about... Oh, about 165 on these and I need to go up to about 185 so I'm gonna crank these up to about crank the heat up to about 350 and uh, see if we can't get it there okay so running this at about 350 we have popped up this uh, temperature real quick and we're up to about 180 internal temperature on these so now it's time to uh, put a little sauce on here now this is my own sauce uh, I call it Chuck's decidedly different barbecue sauce okay so I don't know what just happened there but at any rate I put sauce on my chicken here we're at 180 on the temperature and so I'm going to leave that sit on these for I'm going to say about 10 minutes or so and we'll come back at it Ooh -wee, that looks good That sauce seemed to cool them down a little bit, actually. Alright, we can go ahead and get this uh, 
chicken off of here now. Man, that was good. Alright folks, you know what time it is now. Alright folks, well, you saw how easy that was to smoke chicken. Now, with a whole chicken, I would have used my um, remote thermometer and I just stuck the probe in between the, the body and actually into the thigh. Um, you know, between the body and the, and the, the thigh, I guess you want to say. Uh, into the thickest part. I would have read it there. But with just parts, pieces I should say, chicken, I don't do it that way. So hopefully, I'm starting to lose my light here. And uh, I haven't really let this chicken rest. So I'm getting ready to give it a good shot here. And hopefully I'm not going to burn my tongue and the inside of my mouth. Mm -mm. Folks. Mm-hmm. I hope you can see that. Got some good steam coming off there. This chicken is wonderful and tender. Now then, kicking it up to 350 degrees right there at the end. That helps crispy up the chicken. Or I should say it's crispy up the skin a little bit. That makes it so you can bite through it without trying to seem like you're trying to bite through a piece of rubber or something. If you don't crispy it up, it can be pretty tough. Doesn't mean it won't taste good, it's just going to give you a hard time to chew, chew through. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do me a favor, down here in the bottom right hand corner, hit like and subscribe. And stay tuned, there's always more to come. And thanks for watching.